Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you are. Hello, and welcome to today's English lesson. And today we're going to be doing something slightly different and working up your house vocabulary. So I'm sure many of you already know the basics of describing your house, but as with everything, we can always learn more and dive a little bit deeper into the details. So I'm going to work through some vocabulary that I think you need to know. We're talking about additional spaces that you may not be familiar with. So stick with me. Here we go. So the first one is the attic. The attic is a storage space in the roof of a house. Sometimes this space is transformed into an additional room. And this is then referred to as uh, the attic. Not every house has an attic. So some houses, um, you know, they will have a, a very low pitch. The pitch is how how high the point the, or how steep the slopes are in the house. So a house with a high pitch is really steep, has a really steep roof like that. And the house with a low pitch has a, a less severe slope. It's not as steep. So a, a high pitch and a low pitch. Um, if you have a low pitched roof, then you can't, there's not much space to access in the roof. And so in those cases, there won't be access to the attic. We call the access point, which is a hole normally in the ceiling below. Um, we call that the hatch, the hatch. Um, some people will add stairs that you can pull down or permanent stairs to walk up but often you just have to use a ladder so you op you use a ladder we have a ladder for our attic and you open the hatch the hatch let me show you this hatch um my son has just discovered our hatch he looks at the ceiling and goes what's that and I say that's the door to the attic what's the attic <laughs> it's just where we store all our additional things like our Christmas decorations and things like that. So um, the attic and um, what do we call this? I was thinking about this the other day. Um, if someone has transformed their attic, it's called a, a conversion. So you've done, an, um, we did a roof conversion or an attic conversion. We've made an attic room now. So yeah, when you change your attic into a room, you call it a conversion. So we've done a conversion in the attic space. It's now an additional room in the house. Okay, next on the list is back door. The back door might seem really obvious, but I just wanted to cover it. The back, the door at the back of the house on the, on the ground floor is used to access the garden or the yard. Some people might be able to go around their house if their house is detached or semi-detached. They might be able to go from the front round to the back of the house and gain access to the house from the back door. Some people might do that if they have a carpet at the front and they've got muddy shoes. So they want to access through the back because um, there's no carpet at the back or something like that. Um, here we go. I've written there is a cat flap in the back door so the cat can come and go as she pleases. And a cat flap, I'm sure, is self-explanatory. It's a little flap that it's a little door, basically, for the cat to push to go in and out. A cat flap. A cat flap. Notice I don't really pronounce the T on cat. I say cat flap. Cat flap. OK, if I was saying cat on its own, I would pronounce the T. So I've got a cat. I love my cat. But if I say cat flap, I take off that T. Okay, next on the list, we have the word balcony. Balcony. A balcony is a small platform, often on the outside of a house, enclosed by a wall or a balustrade, which is like railings, metal bars, um, with access from an upper floor window or door. So it's raised up. Just think about Juliet. 
Romeo, oh, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? <gasps> oh, it is she, it is my lady love. So Juliet stood famously on her balcony, on her balcony. Um, and the example sentence I've written here is, it's a luxury to have a balcony on a lovely sunny day. Great. The next word is basement. Basement. Uh, this is also actually known as a cellar. A cellar. Um, although the cellar definitely conjures up images of dark, damp, cold, wet space where you might keep wine. <laughs> I always think of a wine cellar. So it's not really um, somewhere you want to spend time in the cellar dark and cold and damp. Ooh. But a basement doesn't tend to feel that way. A basement suggests that it's dry and habitable, somewhere you might want to spend time. It could be converted into a nice living space. So I'll write it here anyway, cellar. Um, it's the floor of a building which is partly or entirely below ground. That's why we think of it as being a dark space. Um, because it's low. Um, some flats and apartments are entirely or partly below ground, and these are referred to as basement flats. In London, we have a lot of basement flats. So there'll be a block, like or a very tall building. Um, these are usually like Victorian or Georgian style buildings. So they've been up for a long time, and they might be three or four floors high. And one of the floors will be lower. You'll look as you walk down many streets in London, there'll be railings at the side of the pavement and you can see a window that's low down, kind of at your feet and lower. And there's steps going down to a door to access that space. And that's the basement flat. I lived in a basement flat um, for a little while, not so long ago. Um, I've actually written it here. During my time in London, I lived in a basement flat. It was so dark and had lots of damp issues. Yeah, because they're below ground level, they tend there tends to be a lot of damp in the walls and the problem with the damp. The damp proof course is the lining that you have in the walls, a damp proof course that stops water seeping into walls. Um, OK, so, yes, the basement is a room below a house, but a basement flat is a flat that sits lower than ground level. Next, we have the word, and we all know this, bedroom, a bedroom. It's a room where a person can relax and sleep. In the UK, um, in UK houses, these are often situated on the upper floors. So it's very unusual here to find a bedroom on the ground floor. I have been in a bedroom on the ground floor, but that was because there were a lot of people in my family and we didn't have enough space. So sometimes we would transform the living room area into a bedroom. Um, and sometimes if someone has mobility issues, they can't afford to buy a bungalow and they can't install a stair lift, like we talked about earlier, then they might move into a bed on the ground floor. So they might have a bedroom set up in the living room area. Okay, but usually you'd find our bedrooms upstairs. And the example sentence I've written here is, our house has three bedrooms. Well, it's more like two and a half. We turned the box room into a single room. It's tiny. And that brings me on to the next word, box room. Box room It's saying here it wants to separate it. But, um, I think in the UK we write it as one as one word, but you might want to put a little hyphen in there. Anyway, a box room is a small room in a house that's used for storing large items like a suitcase or, um, you know, your unused furniture and your Christmas decorations. Uh, and the example sentence I've written here is, we don't have an attic here, so we have to store everything either in the box room or shed. Um, lots of people 
in recent years have been turning their box rooms into functional rooms, like a very small study, an area where you work, or a very small bedroom, or a nursery, because they tend to fit um, a cot, which is a baby bed, very easily. We have a box room that we've turned into our nursery with for our son to sleep in. Okay, next on the list, brick. Brick is an important word. Um, it's a material which is used to build houses. So a, a brick is a, a block uh, which is used to build houses. You find them usually um, as red brick in the UK. And most of our houses here are made from brick, from red brick. Um, or some of the bigger buildings might use breeze block, which are like bigger bricks. Um, but yes, brick is very common here, particularly red brick. And my example sentence is, we need to find a good brick layer to finish building the brick wall at the end of our garden. Okay, good. The next word is cabinet. Cabinet or cabinets, plural. A cabinet is basically a cupboard where you keep items like plates. You often find cabinets in the bathroom and in the kitchen. Um, the example sentence I've written here is, can you check the glass cabinet in the kitchen to see if I put the theatre tickets in there, please? We have quite a lot of cabinets in our kitchen, which I'm very pleased about. However, Despite having lots of cabinets, we still don't seem to have enough space for all our kitchen gadgets and gizmos. So there are still lots of things that live out on the side in the kitchen. And it frustrates me because I like things to be quite minimal. OK, the next word is carpet. Carpet. A carpet is a thick material that covers the entire floor of a room. It's similar to a rug or a mat. But a rug will only cover part of the floor and you can move a rug. I have a rug in my conservatory that I move regularly. We lift it up sometimes when the boys are doing um, a messy play activity and then I'll put it back down after I've cleaned up. But a carpet is permanent. Once it's down, you wouldn't move it around. It normally has to be fitted so that it doesn't move. And so to pull up a carpet is a big decision and a big change. And usually because you're changing the carpet entirely or you've decided to go from a carpeted floor to a hard floor, whether it's tiled or um, wooden. OK, next we have the word ceiling, ceiling, ceiling. It's got a strange spelling, ceiling. Ceiling. So a ceiling is basically the top of the room. What you see from the inside, that's the ceiling. If you're outside and you're looking down onto a building, that's the roof. Looking up, that's the ceiling. OK, so it's the interior, the top inside of a room. And the example sentence I've given here is looking at this top bit here. We decided to paint the ceiling black. <gasps> it was a bold decision, but I think it looks amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Has anyone here ever painted their ceiling any color other than white? And did it work? Let me know. Next, we have the word corridor. Corridor is a long passage. It's like a hallway. It's exactly the same as a hallway. It's a long passage between the rooms in a house or apartment. In a hotel, there are lots of long corridors with many doors on either side. Example sentence. I have hung several family photos in the corridor. Countertop is the next one, or you might just say counter. And this is a long, flat, narrow surface or a table in the kitchen at which people are served food or food is prepared. So it's basically the surface. That's the counter or the countertop. You hear the word counter and countertop more in a commercial setting, like at a shop or a cafe or a restaurant. When you go to the counter, that's that surface where you meet the person serving you 
hello, can I have a coffee, please? Okay, put your money on the counter. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, next, we have the word decking. Now, decking is the wooden the wooden area, like the long planks of wood that are laid to make a space, a floor, usually out the back of a house. So in the back garden, attached to the house, you might have decking. In Australia, maybe in America, this would be referred to as the deck. And we can use the word deck here, but often we say decking. So it's just a slight British difference. Um, yeah. So you paint the decking, you might need to replace the decking. You often have furniture on your decking or plant pots and you spend time on the decking enjoying the garden without getting attacked by ants, <laughs> which is the case in my garden. If you sit on the grass, the ants come out. <laughs> so we sit on the decking instead. Um, the example sentence here is, it's going to be dry for a few days, so I must stain the decking tomorrow. Next, a really simple one is dining room. Dining room. It's a room that's used for eating meals. It has a table and chairs. And I might say to you, um, do you want to eat dinner in the dining room or in front of the telly? Telly is slang for TV. Next, we have the word doorbell. Doorbell. And this is simply a bell that's located by the front door that people use to let you know they're there. Sometimes it's just called a bell. I rang the bell and they've said here, we tried the doorbell, but there was no answer. So we used the knocker instead. The knocker is a metal hoop um, or semicircle metal thing on the front. And you bang it on the door to make a loud noise to alert someone to your presence. I'm here. Let me in. Next, we have the word driveway. A driveway is a private area at the front of a house which you can drive on and park your car on. We uh, used to have a gravel area at the front of our house and it's still a driveway. It was a gravel driveway. Um, but it, we always would walk gravel into the house. So gravel is the loose stones and it would drive me insane. Um, so we replaced the gravel with um, bricks. We laid a, a brick driveway. Well, it's not bricks, it's um, like paving stones, but it's a harder surface now and not, no loose stones and uh, it looks much better. Next, we have the word ensuite. Um, an ensuite, a bathroom or a shower room directly attached to a bedroom for exclusive use. The example I put here is Ah, you have the ensuite and the rest of the family can use the family bathroom. Um, ensuite is French. And um, yes, if you have an ensuite, it means you have a bathroom or a toilet that you can use that no one else in the house can access it because it's only accessible via your bedroom. Often in a hotel, you have an ensuite. You don't normally have to share a bathroom unless you're in a bed and breakfast. And sometimes then there is a shared bathroom or shower room that you have to use. OK, next on the list is an entrance hall. An entrance hall, as you might have guessed, is the hall space um, as you enter the house. As, as you come into the house through the front door, there's this hall usually. Sometimes there's a front door that goes straight into the front room. Um, but this space often contains hooks for your coat and storage for your shoes. So I always think of an entrance hall being quite a messy space, um, quite dirty. It's where everyone takes off their shoes. If you're, if you're um, a household that has a no shoes policy, we tend not to have shoes in our house. We put them on at the front door and we take them off when we come in. And my example sentence here is, our house is quite cold. The main problem is that the entrance hall is so drafty. This is a funny word. Draft. Ignore the spelling. Draft. Draft can be a number of things, but in this case, a draft is a cold um, stream of air like that seeps through windows or doors or sometimes through a hole in the wall or floor. Like, oh, it's a cold draft coming. Can you shut that window? It's cold. It's getting this 
gush of air, this draft hitting me in the neck. It's making me feel cold. So if somewhere is drafty, there's lots of streams of air seeping in. Hi, guys. If you'd like to watch the rest of this lesson, or better still, if you'd like to join me live in my next session, or even better than that, if you'd like to practice your English speaking with me and other students, then why not come and join the Elan community? Every single year, we do hundreds of live lessons and conversation club sessions. There are also numerous courses that you can take to progress your English language, your business English, or even your English pronunciation. I'll leave all the links down in the description box below. And if you can't join us, then just make sure you subscribe here and continue to enjoy this YouTube channel. Until next time, take care.